Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church on this All Saints Sunday. So delighted to have you all worshiping with us today. If you're here visiting with us this morning, we want to let you know we're especially delighted to have you worshiping with us. If you'd like, you can fill out the visitor's card in the pew rack in front of you. And there's an offering plate at the back of the church, and you can place that in there. And that will let us know how to reach out to you and let you know how uh, we can help make you feel especially welcome here at St. John's this morning. Also, for those of you who are following us online this morning, a few minutes prior to our video going live, this morning's worship bulletin was posted to our Facebook page, and you can find the link to that on our Facebook page. Also, uh, Deacon Brian wanted me to let you all know that on the first Sunday of December, we're going to have an Invite a Friend to Church Day, an Invitation Sunday. So just something to be thinking about and praying about, how you might reach out to someone in your life that you'd like to bring to church with you on that first Sunday in December. Something to uh, keep in our hearts and in our minds. Uh, also, uh, the last announcement that I'll make for this morning, other announcements are printed in your worship bulletin, uh, but you may have received the uh, pledge cards in the mail, uh, or we have them here in the office if you'd like to have one. Uh, but our stewardship campaign is now ongoing. And so we'll hear a little bit more later this morning from one of our parishioners, Elizabeth Dillon, about her stewardship reflection. But if you'd like to have uh, a stewardship card to fill out, please let us know after the service or we can certainly mail one to you. But we'll be collecting those on Sunday, November 21st for our in-gathering Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So I just invite you to pray and think about if there are ways that you might consider pledging your time and your talent uh, and your treasure with us here at St. John's. Again, so delighted to have you all worshiping with us this morning. Let us now take a few moments of silence and prepare our hearts for worship. One Lord, one faith, 
one baptism. One God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, and glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. Our first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning at the sixth verse. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said that on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 24, and we will do it responsibly by half verse. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. For it is He who founded it upon the seas. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And the Lord, God, and Such is the generation of those who seek Him. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of Glory. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 21, beginning at the first verse. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their gods. They will be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every fear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Who have been impactful to us, who have spoken and taught us 
directly in our personal experiences with them, or even maybe through reading about them and their stories. The lives of the saints who have gone before us and the lives of the saints who are being raised up now are all with us on this special day. We celebrate this today on All Saints Sunday. I'm going to share with you a little kind of show and tell project. This is an icon of today's gospel passage. It's the raising of Lazarus from John's gospel. And I'll kind of put this in the back of the church afterwards if you'd like to get a closer look at it and, and look through it. But this, I think, tells a beautiful story for us to consider today as we hold in tension the lives of those who have gone before us and the very lives that are being raised up in our midst here today. The lives of all the saints indeed. But today as we hear the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, we are reminded and we learn in this story just how close Jesus was to this man. Jesus was very deeply connected to the life of Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha. We hear about Jesus weeping in today's gospel passage, a reaction that he has not yet shown the depth of his love for such a person in all of Scripture at this point. We are very moved in the way that Jesus is moved at the death of his friend. But also that we learn later in John's Gospel about this family that Jesus is ministering to today is that Mary will anoint Jesus' feet on the week leading up to his death. She will anoint his feet with oil, her entire savings account, worth of perfume, to anoint Jesus' feet, to show the respect and honor to the one that loves them and their family. So we have a very intimate portrait of Jesus connecting with a family and connecting with the human family in today's gospel passage. But the reason I wanted to share this icon with you is because a few years ago I was invited to pray this icon, that is to look upon it and to meditate and to see what God might be speaking through this image. And as I prayed with this image a few years ago, I was struck by one particular detail. And that detail is that when we see Lazarus coming out of the tomb, and we see the one who is unbinding Lazarus, I noticed that it was a child. I thought how strange that was to have a child unbinding this man who is coming from death back into life. The longer I sat and prayed with that image, I was reminded of my own childhood. I was reminded of this very sense of new life, of new birth, in which we are given in Christ Jesus. This image is tied together with Christ both raising the dead, but also breathing new life into the young and into the child. It is all tied together in this image and in this story, just as today's service is tied together to celebrate the lives of the saints who have gone before us, but also the lives of the saints who are to be newly baptized to partake in our fellowship together. I pray for us today that we may look at the image, not just of this icon, but the image of one another, as made in the image of Christ and as carers of light Christ, Christ's light into the world. The baptism reminds us of new life, to the lives of the saints who we remember today teach us of the life that has already been given to us. We who are in this congregation are the witnesses of this life. We are the ones who bear witness to Christ's resurrection and to new life and new birth. May we come to know that it is indeed Christ who is the one who brings life to all, the dead and the living, now and forever. Amen. This time I'll now invite our families to come forward.
candidates for baptism, holy baptism, will now be presented. I present Sir Nicole Santiago for the sacrament of baptism. I present Cameron Baxter Kennedy for the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? <laughs> Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Savior? Do all you in the congregation who witness these vows, do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water 
Over it the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And into your son Jesus received baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ by his death. By it we share his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. Seneca, receive the light of Christ. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection. And share with us in his eternal priesthood. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the peace of Christ and welcome our new friends and family. Peace. Since 2006. 
16, and it means a lot to me. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it might bear more fruit. As the branch does not bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, I am him. He is it that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's from the book of John, John 15. In the spring, I had a dog on me. It hit me like a bolt of lightning. My next door neighbor, Marie, offered to come to teach me how to prune my grapevines. I knew that the main vine should be the one chosen and that it should branch out onto the wires, but I did not know how to achieve uh, a vine that would produce good fruit. She arrived surgically prepared with her sharp pruners and lobber and was ready to teach me. Because my grapevines were so young, there wasn't much to prune. But I learned what the strategy should be. Because that was quickly done, she turned to the orchard, teaching me how to prune each fruit tree. I never knew or observed how severely a fruity tree or vine is shaped and cut back to produce the best fruit. In this Bible passage from John, we are described as the branches of his grapevines. If I'm a grapevine branch, I prune myself back to only the parts of me that are in service of God and that abide in his will, and I burn those branches that cannot bear fruit by themselves, just like in my garden. As a child, I was introduced to the community of Christians and to God's love. As an adult, I had varying depths of a relationship with God. The depth of my relationship and conversations with God have been most frequent and clear when I attend a church that has a strong Christian community and that shares unified values, vision, and strength. There are two churches where I've been a member, where I've really felt connected, and St. John's is one of them. This church is filled with people that love God and want to serve Him. The congregation is interconnected, and each person has a role to play within it. Part of that connection we have is by financially supporting the church and giving of our time and talents. One way I really enjoy um, is to play for the Celtic students, and if you've never come, you should come, it's really fun. It's outside in the courtyard in the evening, and we have like meditation and songs. It's like really pretty, and um, it's just a time to like reflect. And as a flute player, I really enjoy it. As Scott's one, I really enjoy him. Every bit of support, financially or otherwise, binds the giver to the church and tightens that bond. In First Corinthians chapter twelve, we are told there are different kinds of gifts. The same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God. Amen. Thank you, Elizabeth. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
please stand as you are able. As we prepare ourselves to receive Holy Communion on this All Saints Sunday, we remember the lives of the saints that we have lost in this past year since All Saints last year. Rose Boyd, Patricia Frazier, Glenna Taylor, and Wiley Hart. Lord Christ, your saints have been the lights of the world in every generation. Grant that we who follow in their footsteps may be made worthy to enter with them into that heavenly country, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. Together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for him, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your sins into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now is our 
Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. My friends, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Heart and peace. Remember the poor. Pray for the sick and love one another. May God and His Holy Spirit be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, and beneath us to hold us up through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.